It doesn't matter if the rim's spinning. It doesn't matter if it's a triangle rim. Shoot or shoot. Don't make excuses. It's like breathing to me. That's as much as I need basketball in my life. You know, I'm a I'm an addict to basketball. I love it so much. Well, we're here with Chris Matthews, also known as the Lethal Shooter. Just watched his documentary, Life in Basketball, The Rise of Lethal Shooter. Amazing project, Chris. Uh, we definitely enjoyed it. Thank you. First of all, how, how, how did you first get the idea of just venturing into, into coaching? My back was against the wall. Um, I was kind of at that crossroad in my life. Like, what do I really want to do in my life? And uh, shoot, I was selling Sierra Miss cans. I was a custodian. I was a, people don't even know, I was a teacher's assistant at Kneewood Academy. I was doing all type of stuff, trying to figure out what I was supposed to do in my life. And then that's what all my homies that I used to play with, Jeff Green, Kevin Serafin, rest in peace to John Thompson. He used to tell me I should be a coach. And I was like, you know what? Let me try Let me try this shooting coach thing. You know what I mean? Look at this now, bro. Six, seven years later, eight years later, now I'm considered one of the best trainers in the world. It just shows us, like, we always have a plan for our life, but God be having that bigger plan. You know what I mean? So, and, and don't get mad if the plan you want it don't work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right now, obviously, things are working out for you, but what were those What were those low times like for you? It was very depressing. Um, like I said, the documentary was times that sometimes I sit in the room, bro, for like 10, 12 hours. And I'm not even talking about at nighttime. This is during the day. I always thought that I was going to reach a certain point in basketball, and it just wasn't happening because of injuries and different small things that was happening in my life. I really wanted to make everybody who sacrificed for me happy i wanted to prove to them that their sacrifice was for a reason just like i said in the doc documentary like what are you going to do with your life like now is the time and that's when i started realizing like if you're failing right now right don't look at it as a failure look at it as a way to learn so that type of failure doesn't happen again watching the documentary it was kind of it was kind of made me think about joe budden in a sense like you know he was known for years in this lane of, of hip-hop and was great great at it but he was actually having more success in the new lane than the original dream. And I think it's just interesting to see that does happen for a lot of people. Exactly, that's a great example. And Joe is a great example. That's a good friend of mine. Don't be afraid to pivot. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good, yeah. that's good, that's yeah. good. Watching a documentary, obviously, like, you know, you have a variety of clients, basketball players, which, you know, you'd expect, but also recording artists. I mean, shoot, if I asked you to go to the gym right now, you will want to shoot. You know, everybody love basketball, yeah, bro. True. So somebody like Machine Gun Kelly, he's on tour right now in Europe, fleas in Europe. Drake has to do a tour with 21 Savage. They want to take time to relax as well and go into a gym and shoot. So a lot of people be like, man, why would 21 Savage want to train, bro? He ain't no basketball player. Yes, he is. He just ain't no pro. He want to hoop. He want to get better. I'm just in here to get them better and most importantly, be that space when they come to. They don't have to think about the concert. They don't have to think about signing autographs. They don't have to think about, you know, all, all the stuff that comes with their life. Like you saw what Machine Gun Kelly says. Like, it's like a therapeutic session just to just – just to cut my brain off and have a great time. And that's what my life is devoted to. And that's why I love what I do. I love making other people happy. And cause I feel like, bro, I was born to be a servant to others, to bring joy to other people with the art of shooting, to make them happy. And you said it also shows the relationship that hip hop has with basketball. Like there's, there's that synergy that's always been there. And it also too shows the, the change in the game. Cause I feel like, you know, growing, for me growing up, it was always like, can you dunk? I can't remember the last time someone was actually like, really preoccupied with dunking. Like shooting has become like the new dunking, I think. Yeah, and I think if it didn't turn to that point, maybe Lethal Shooter wouldn't be a, a thing. It, but Lethal Shooter might not be a household name. So every time people bring that up, I say everything was God's timing on for everything that was happening in my life, bro, for me to post those shooting videos of me doing what I'm doing. Because are there other people in the world that can shoot great? Absolutely. You know what I mean? There's, there's tons of great shooters in the world. It's just, you know, the timing that I did it at, I think it was just that spark that everybody was like, man, who is this lethal shooter guy? I love his shooting form. I love that he can do this. I love that he's breaking world records. Like, oh, wow, this guy's making a paper ball through a straw. That's when I started really getting creative. If the world wasn't talking about how cool shooting is, people probably be looking at my content like, bro, what is this dude doing? Like, you know mm. what I mean? But they're not looking at it as like that because everybody loves shooting the basketball. Before we get into like some of the nitty gritty of the, 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 the thing, like how involved were you in the producing of it? Like, were you, did you have like a say in how your story was being told or was just kind of, you were just the subject of the documentary and that's kind of that's kind of it? Yeah, so the director, Mandan, he did a great job of uh, basically telling my story. He did such a great job that I really didn't have to really speak at all. He's one of the best that I've seen do this. He actually just did French Montana's documentary as well. 
Um, the, and the, and the, the thing I love about him, why you don't have to tell him much to, to do, because he'll ask you. So if we go into a certain neighborhood or something like that, he's not trying to tell your story on how he sees it. Well, once we get to the, because I took him to the projects, I took him to all type of stuff, and he's like, so like, what, what happened here? Well, boom, 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 boom. Okay, this is how we're gonna do this this way. That like he did such a good job of telling who you are and not what he wants to tell and what Red Bull wanted to tell. And that's why it's a dream come true to have a company like Red Bull that believes in me, to invest in me in that way. And most importantly, give me my own creative view on how my life is. Because there's a lot of brands that don't allow you to do that. And that's why I love Red Bull, because they allow me to do that with a doc. They allow me to do that with my content. They allow me to do that with every single thing. And that's why they're a brand that's for the athletes. That's good. I just want to pull some quotes from the, from the documentary. Chris Simmons at one point said, one thing I noticed about Chris is you, you, you couldn't break his spirit. Somebody else said, um, it's, no, it's, it's no such thing as luck. Chris is where he's at because he could, because he had that work ethic. Where, where does that, that, that resolve, where did that work resolve and work ethic come from for you? It comes from seeing what you saw as a guy that died. Um, my father, he's actually my cousin, but he's my father because my real dad wasn't in my life, but it was seeing him devote his life to other people. It was seeing him fail, but always keeping money in my pocket. It was seeing him go through so many things as a man, but this dude kept pushing. So I feel like, like I said in the doc, why would I quit? And I watched this guy never quit. I watched this guy invest into other people. I watched this guy be on the phone four, five, six in the morning helping other people by life. That's what my life is devoted to. I want to be a representation of Jeffrey Winslow. I want to be that one to allow, to show people, yeah, my biological parents didn't want me. Yeah, for two years, I didn't have anywhere to live. Yeah, I grew up in the project. Yeah, I grew up with no electricity a lot of times. Yeah, I grew up with no heat a lot of times. But it's still no excuse. All of us are born to be great. And like I said, all of my interviews, being great don't mean, bro, living in Beverly Hills. Being great don't mean me and you pulling up in a Lambo truck. Being great is just doing what you love and helping other people with their lives. I like, I like that. Um, now, one thing I stood out from the documentary of it is this, how many people you, you're working with. Like, you work with a lot of people. Like, what's your day-to-day -day like? You got to be very organized and you got to be very strategic. So, um, like, for instance, um, I go to Paris tomorrow, but when I come back, I have all of my clients, like everybody's going to be in town, Sabonis, Jalen Brown. But the thing about it, if Sabonis, Jalen Brown, and Grayson Island and Bobby all here in one day, I got to be so strategic because I might get a phone call from Michael B. Jordan saying, yo, I'm trying to kick, I'm trying to get in there, but I might be in the gym all day. But it's my drive, bro. Like, I don't care if I got to be in the gym, bro, from 7 a.m. all the way to midnight. I'm going to do it because I want to help other people love the art of shooting as much as I love it. But most importantly, I want to be that person that they can come to to shoot the basketball. So it's just about being organized, having my snacks, and like you're saying, having the right team. My manager, Rebecca King, she does a great job of keeping me in line on what's going on and being organized. She's been with me. Bro, I had 10,000 followers when I met Rebecca. Bro, she worked for free for two years, for free. Wow. to help me uh, with my brand and stuff like that. Now we're doing, we're doing, of course, she's not working for free now, but it was just to have somebody like her in my life, you know, it's, it's, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And, and, and when it comes to social media, because I mean, you, you kind of talked about it in the documentary, like I see you commenting all over the place, just like, I, I mean, I follow you. So I'm like, yeah. well, this guy's commenting everywhere. <laughs> like how much of your time do you devote to social media? And like, what's your, what's your just mindset around social media in general? Because I know for some people it could be a, a great tool, for some people it could be a toxic, you know, toxic environment. Like, what's your relationship with social media like right now, like a few years or well, years into being a coach? Well, I feel like if you let social media make it toxic, it means you're following the wrong pages. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot of people would be like, oh man, social media toxic. I don't know. You need to follow the motivational page. You need to follow the, the things that are going to uplift your brain, if that makes sense. And the one thing about me, people say, man, Lethal, you always comment. No. I'm always commenting on the right pages because I follow mm. cool. I follow cool pages. You don't see me commenting on pages that's not cool stuff. So people say, "Man, give it a rest, lethal." No, I like sports content just like you like sports content. So you can comment all day, but I can't. The only reason you see mine is because I have 2.5 million followers. I got a question <laughs> for you: If I'm commenting all day and you're seeing it, doesn't that mean both of us are on here together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'm coming from, so man, shit, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep being me, bro. I love good content. Mm -hmm. Now, now, uh, quickly before we go, um, you, you used to play in the NBLC, you know, the um, National Basketball League of Canada. 
Um, right. We're in Toronto. We're here in Toronto. Was there anything you noticed that was just different between Canada and the U.S.? Uh, no. The the players that I know that are Canadian born, they're dogs. Man, they play hard. One of my boys, his name's Dwayne, and he's probably he went to George George Washington, and he played from played with me at NBL Canada. He's probably one of the hardest players I ever met in my life. There's a lot of guys that are born in Canada. They're real hoopers. It's just the only thing they don't have that America have. I think we have more media outlets. We have AAU. We have different mm-hmm. things for them to be seen. One of my teammates that played with me in college, his name's Andrew Nicholson. He's from Canada. You get what I'm saying? He's a beast mm-hmm. that he played at St. Bonaventure. He got drafted by the Orlando Magic. So for me, I don't see I don't see no difference. I, th- I think they're I think they're as good as America, bro. Okay. Okay. Um, any, any advice for for people who are you know going through the same process as you? Like maybe the initial dream has died, but they have you know they haven't made that kind of they haven't found the new thing yet. I'll say whatever you want to do in life, go look up the top five people that are doing that and study what they're doing. Study how they feel and then understand what they're doing. And then you try to replicate what they're doing, but with your own type of way. If that makes sense, I'm not saying steal it. Late at night. I'll watch Eddie Murphy. I'll watch Tyler Perry. I'll watch uh, when Whitney Houston was at her peak. I'll watch uh, when Marvin Gaye was at his peak. But the reason why I'm watching these things, I want to know how was these people doing these type of things and why did they do this and how they do it so I can try to replicate that. I want to be like Barack Obama. I want to be like Eddie Murphy. I look at all those different greats in different fields because I don't want to just be a trainer. You see, I'm doing content. I'm doing acting. I'm doing commercials. I'm doing all type of stuff. But for somebody that's maybe not doing all that, if you're doing one thing, let's say somebody wants to be a great, I'm not trying to be funny, a great plumber. Look at the top five plumbing companies in your area and figure out why they the top five plumbing companies and and take those small things and start when you start your stuff, you do it, you use it that way. So to be the best, you got to watch the best and you got to be become better than the best and outwork them. Yeah, that's definitely solid advice. Now, last but not least, you know, you're you're a very you know, driven guy. You see things, you know, you're an athlete. You've accomplished so much, commercials, content, working with the top artists and, and athletes, you know, in, in the world. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you still kind of, like, have your eye on of, like, you know, or goals that you still kind of have, you know, before you that you're kind of, you know, still pushing towards? I think my biggest goal is I, I just want to impact as many people around the world to not give up. You know what I mean? And that's why... I, Having Red Bull is a blessing. You know, I, th- this summer they're sending me to Japan. They're sending me to Serbia. They're sending me to New York. They're sending me to all these places to just keep telling my story. So I say the biggest thing that I haven't done is reaching the people that I haven't reached yet. You get what I'm mm. saying? Just to let them know, bro, All the way you feel, I feel that same way. Like I was having a talk last night with one of my best friends. He's a trainer. His name's Wade Dunstan. And he, it was a time that me and him, like I was telling you, we were selling Sierra Miss cans. People was laughing at us because he was a, a Jordan All-American, a Nike All-American. He went D1, but he was at a low selling cans, bro. We were selling cans at a carnival. You get where I'm wow. coming from? And, I'm, and we mm. both looking at it it's like, bro, look what we doing now. So for all the people that's out there, like my goal, my biggest goal is that every day, I'm trying to reach another five people. I'm trying to reach another 10 people. I'm trying to reach another 20 people. And to have a brand like Red Bull, it makes it a little bit more easier because they're putting me in front of the masses to tell my story so people can be like, hold up. This dude had all that happen to him and he's still doing what he's doing? Nah, if he could do it, I could do it. Ain't no damn way. And I got way more resources than him. And I got this. I can do it too. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that, man. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are always tempted. I was actually just having a conversation with someone yesterday about this, the, always the temptation to give up and how many business owners she, she she's seen give up just recently. Yeah. So that's always a temptation for a lot of people, for artists, for athletes. Uh, yeah, so thank yeah, so thank you for that. So, yeah, thank you for your time, Chris, man. And thank you for the interview, Kev. It means a lot, man. Absolutely, man. And, you know, whenever you're in Canada next, just, you know, let us know. We'll love to, you know, anything you're doing in Canada, we'd love to kind of come through and do a little coverage and whatnot. So, but, um, nah, for yeah, sure. Next, guys, next time I pull up, dude, if I do something with the boy, I'll let you know, man. Come through, man. Hey, that, that, yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah. <laughs>